Okay, so I can, yeah. I can just start to uh, briefly introduce myself. I'm a consultant, and my job has, is to develop the strategy for e-surveillance. If you understand what is e-surveillance, I did a bit of research, but uh, any kind of supranational surveillance will be e-surveillance in any case. Uh, now, I will present to you where we are, and uh, we started the project by really defining what we want to do. And we haven't looked yet at all on how are we going to do it. Because I think it's important to kind of sort the issues, be very clear of why we want to have a supranational surveillance to achieve which objectives. Then we can deduct which data will be needed, which indicators will be looked at, which data will be needed to uh, build those indicators. And then we will look on how we can collect that information through which channels. And uh, so don't be frustrated, but today we're not looking at the how to do it, but more where we are in the what to do. So we've seen that nice picture from the lake. It inspired me when I prepared the presentation. The, there is the concept of data lakes, and I sort of reflected by looking at the at the lake yesterday, but it means there is a lot of data out there, and uh, Elizabeth has shown us how much you can find on the web when you look for the, for the data. And the question here, as she indicated, is really to structure the data and, uh, and make, make sense of it. And then on the other hand, on the side of the lake, you have a nice repository of indicators, which is a bit where we want to, where we want to go kind of a warehouse in which we can, uh, we can deposit the indicators. And we're not starting from nowhere. Morgan has just shown us that we have already early data uh, that was actually decided in the 50s for the objective of that time. So now what we are currently doing is really to review why do we want uh, to have supranational surveillance and then redefine the type of data that we would like to, to collect. So there are challenges, and I will not insist too much. You are well aware of those challenges. Having a system that should capture the data from very different countries in very different settings, at different types of transmission, this is already one challenge. Another challenge is that we, we are convinced, and we have discussed that in the past uh, two days, that the lab information needs to be linked with the AP information. And believe me, this is a, this is a challenge. Uh, we, cannot, uh, we, cannot, uh, we, we can expect, actually, to see quite a, a lot of uh, large epidemics popping up in the course of the, of, the, of the surveillance. And therefore, the system should be reactive and ready to, to cope with that. And uh, there may be conflicting country priorities. So we've seen that, for example, the regional platform during the COVID pandemic have stopped functioning for a couple of months. And uh, this is exactly what we don't want to, to have in a system like, uh, like that. So we have to ensure uh, sustained funding and resources so that the system will continue functioning even in the event of conflicting priorities, let's say. A couple of principles for supranational surveillance. I mean, the first is really to minimize the burden on the, on the participating countries. You don't want them to spend time trying to transmit the data to the supranational level. So that has to be built in the, in the system. You have to maintain the country ownership. This is extremely important. It's not that the data becomes, uh, the, the data ownership remains with the country and they have to decide uh, how we can use that data, what we can do with that data. And uh, it remains the, the country to update the data, to make corrections and if needed. Uh, the outputs need to be fit for purpose and discussed with the, with the country. It should be obviously language independent because we will bring data in the system from very different countries. 
uh, it should be informative for the users and it should be adaptive to the different country profiles. It should be responsive to threats because you will see that one of the objectives is to look at cross-border threats. And at the end, it should contribute to strengthening the national surveillance as well. So it's really working hand in hand from the national surveillance, the supranational level. So we have identified five objectives, which I'm listing here. And I will go a bit uh, in the detail of each of those five objectives. But just to introduce them to you, the first, it's really to monitor the roadmap impact. That was the trigger of the, of the exercise, as well as other supranational strategies, cholera elimination, the vaccination campaigns, and, 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 and others. So there is a need for that data availability at supranational level to, to monitor those, uh, those initiatives. Second objective is monitor the hotspots and then detect, analyze, contribute to the response to cross-border outbreaks. The third objective is to integrate EPI and lab data, as I already indicated. The fourth objective will be to monitor the surveillance modalities in the various countries, so that we understand what is behind the, the data when we look at the, at the data. And then to monitor as well the performance surveillance performance indicator. Morgan mentioned the kind of zero reporting. This is one of, the, of those indicators. And finally, the fifth objective will be to maintain a data repository for research. So we're not going to collect all the determinants and so on in such a system, but at least we can provide the authoritative data that represent uh, the situation of the country to, to the best of our knowledge. So I will go through a few details on each, but quite rapidly. In each objective, you have a couple of targets that we have identified. Uh, so four targets in the first objective. The first thing is really to indicate that the system will only collect indicator-based surveillance data with the minimum burden on the country. Target two is that that data will be used for the production of routine epidemiological outputs, dashboard, uh, bulletin. I mean, this still remains to be defined. Target three, uh, the, the platform will allow for further in-depth analysis by looking at specific issues in the, in the data, and that would be to inform prevention and control strategies. And the tar target four, is that the supranational system that we plan to implement would be interoperable with the other pillar uh, platform, like uh, the, the WASH, and we discussed that in the corridor, uh, not in the meeting this morning, but uh, the OCVs and all those additional system collecting data pertinent to, to cholera should be completely inter interoperable. Objective two, monitor hotspots and uh, detect, analyze cross-border outbreaks. So the two targets, the first one is to, uh, to, to, to hey, sorry, I need to read, priority, yeah, to coordinate the, uh, make available the data across borders in a country uh, so that we can uh, maximize the impact and prevent the cross-border spread of outbreak activate some, uh, uh, some, some, some activities. If you see that at the border, you have uh, an increased uh, incidence, for example. And once an outbreak has been declared in a, in a country, then the, the system should allow the coordination and prov provision of the data on both sides of the, of the border and in a quite rapid uh, uh, react reaction. Objective three, integrate lab and AP surveillance. So here I will not further develop, but uh, as we discussed, this is an important objective. Surveillance modality and performance. I think uh, you have understood what we are meaning there. It's extremely important to, to, to document that. And then the repository for, uh, for research that I mentioned earlier. So those are the five objectives and the nine targets attached to those objectives 
in the document, when it will be circulated, you will see that within each target, we have some strategies to, to reach the targets that are, that are being developed as well. And to conclude, I would, long, would like to share the vision that we have developed by 2030, cholera supranational and national surveillance are working hand in hand to achieve and maintain a cholera-free world. Thank you. <laughs>